Are you constantly sucking in your abs? Hi, I'm Dr. Melissa, and if you struggle with low back pain, hip pain, pelvic floor issues like overactive bladder, bladder leaks when you cough, run, laugh, or sneeze, prolapse, and more, this is for you. Go grab your mats, and let's do this. Whether it's just a habit, you've been used to sucking in your abs all the time. Maybe it's a stress reaction and that's where you hold your stress and tension. If you're in an exercise class and they say, clench your abs, engage your abs, pull that belly button to spine and keep it tight all of the time, or it's just the pressures that society have put on us to have to be skinny and zip everything up and hold it in nice and tight. You're gonna wanna stop doing that. I've got some exercises later on to show you to help with that, but what's happening is it is disrupting your core and your pelvic floor to constantly be sucking in your abs all of the time. So here's my lovely model. We have our diaphragm here, and you've got your pelvic floor on the bottom. So if you are used to sucking in your abs, what you might notice over time is maybe your upper abs, you notice this line or crease that comes across the top. And it's because when we suck our abs in, we're holding it in. Look at all the pressure that that creates down on our pelvic floor. It's creating too much intra-abdominal pressure to suck and hold those abs in. Our rib cage area gets really tight from holding in the abs, and that's not allowing our diaphragm muscle, our breathing muscle, when we take a breath in, the rib cage can expand out so that the diaphragm can lengthen. And that is what creates all of that pressure on our pelvic floor, which can contribute to things like low back pain, hip pain, and pelvic floor issues. Good news is I've got tons of exercises for us to do today to help with that, to stop with the sucking in the abs. So let's get right into it. So the first one, if you are constantly, maybe you notice you've got that upper ab definition, but the lower abs, no matter how many core crunches, kegels you do, you're like, I just can't get definition on the lower body. It could be a pressure management issue. And we need to release the upper abs because you're constantly clutching. So if you happen to have two tennis balls, you could roll up a towel roll. And I'll also show you a way that you can do this with your hands as well. We're gonna take the balls and you find the bottom of your rib cage because you don't want this on your rib cage. And you'll just place the balls on either side. You could do one side at a time, but coming down to lay on your stomach, you'll know right away, you'll find those tension spots. Maybe you have to wiggle up or down, but when you take the breath in, think of sending the breath into the balls. And then when you exhale, think of the balls going in. Nice breath in. Exhale, sink. Now, if you don't have the balls, you could also use a rolled up yoga mat too. If you don't have those balls, coming onto your back and you can use your hands. So finding that inside part of your rib cage and just gently massaging down along the rib cage. And you can start on one side, maybe starting on the other side, maybe one side's more tender than the other. I'm just doing gentle sweeping motions to loosen up that upper ab area. What we're working on today is to get some more expansion in this rib cage area, release the gripping, release the tension so that you can get the expansion. The diaphragm can go all the way down and we stop increasing that interabdominal pressure. When the pressure goes up, pelvic tension happens. You get more pelvic tension and that's what contributes to pelvic floor issues and aches and pains. And we don't want that. It can be such a habit. I used to do it all the time and it led to my hip pain for years. But good news is there's so many things you can do. And the first part is just becoming aware that you're doing it. So doing this 30, 60 seconds, whether you're using your hands or the balls. Second exercise, coming up into child's pose. So you'll sink those hips back. If you had an ottoman or a chair too, you could also rest your head on that. 
if that's more comfortable for you. But we're gonna sink those hips back. Arms can be in front, they can come down by your side, but I want you focusing on sending the breath down to your low back, sit bone area. Nice, gentle breath in. Exhale, let it go. Nice, gentle breath in. Send that breath nice and low. Exhale, let it out. And when we're breathing in, you want to feel the lengthening of those pelvic floor muscles. You don't want to feel pressure or bearing down, but just a gentle lengthening, almost thinking of like a flower blossoming, kind of opening up. Sometimes we can't feel that because other areas are too tight and we have to address those areas first. I love this breathing exercise. Again, 30 seconds. You're addressing your nervous system. You're stretching out your back. You're learning how to send the breath and expand your rib cage lower down with this exercise. Nice, take one more breath in here. Awesome job. Nice. And you're gonna gently pull yourself, come back up. So here's where if you have some pillows or a bolster would be really helpful. I'm gonna kind of use a pillow and my yoga block. We're gonna start on our left hand side. Bring those knees out in front. Stack the knees and the hips, and you're gonna come down onto your chest and turn your head to face the left-hand side. And you're getting nice and heavy in this position. You can let the arms go out straight. They can be underneath you, but you're using your breath here. I'm gonna stay up so you can hear me. <laughs> you're using your breath, expanding out into the rib cage. So we're working on a trunk rotation here, especially if we sit a lot, whether we're on our devices or computers or driving a bunch, this area can get really tight. So working on anything that opens up your chest and that thoracic spine or trunk mobility mid back can be so beneficial. Nice, breath in, breathe out to the sides, front and back. Exhale, let it go. Good, take a nice breath in. Exhale, let it go. Good, one more breath here. Walk yourself, come back up, and we'll just switch. So bring onto that right side of your hips, stack the knees and the hips. We're gonna spin our chest, ooh, to face the ground. One side could be very noticeably different than the other. Oh, try to turn your head over towards the right. And each breath that you take in, think of sending your breath out to the sides, front, back of your rib cage. Exhale, see if you can just sink, twist a little bit more. Nice breath in. Exhale, let it go. Send the breath, sides, front and back. Exhale, let it out. And one more breath in here. Gently pull yourself, come back up. And then we're gonna come down onto our back. Lowering all the way down. Now, if you have a pillow or a yoga block, you can grab that for this next one, lifting those hips up. And we're just gonna place that underneath our low back sacrum, so kind of a belt line area. It should feel very supportive. It shouldn't feel like you're holding yourself here. And just gently bring those knees in, pulling the knees in towards your chest. Maybe you rock from left to right, but the breath, we're sending the breath all the way down to the pelvic floor. And if you've got the block, it's also like a nice little glute release. I love exercises that have multiple purposes your being for your buck.
and just gently rocking back. So the same thing with this one, that 60 seconds using the breath, let the neck and shoulders relax down. So in all the exercises that we just did, the four ones, it's been working on releasing certain areas of our body, which we might have to do to feel that connection with our breath in the pelvic floor and to help release any tension that we've created from constantly sucking in our abs. The last exercise I'm gonna show you is a way that we can recruit a bunch of other muscles to activate the lower abs and pelvic floor a little bit differently. Nice, take one more breath in here. Awesome, then place those feet back down on the ground. We're gonna grab the blocker pillow and place that in between our knees. Slide those in towards your sit bones. We're gonna take a nice breath in out to the sides, front and back. When you go to exhale, you're gonna squeeze in around the block and blow out candles. But you don't wanna see this pushing up. It's this gentle lifting up to feel lower abs, pelvic floor. Inhale, soften. Exhale, squeeze in around the block, blow out those candles. Inhale, soften. Exhale, squeeze. Inhale, soften. And when you're blowing out those candles and squeezing, we're using our adductors, our inner thigh muscles will help with the recruitment of the core and pelvic floor. The way you're exhaling, like you're blowing out candles, helps with the recruitment of the pelvic floor and core. Nice one, more breath. So this is a great way to start to activate core and pelvic floor muscles, especially if you notice in exercise classes, like you're constantly gripping and only using upper abs. This is a great way to break an exercise down to make it a little easier or to do as a warm up before the class. Awesome, take that block out. And just make your way, come on up to a comfortable seated position. So those were five different exercises to really help with constantly sucking in the abs all the time. The first step is just noticing that you're doing it. So if the back pain, or like if you were like me and it was the hip pain coming on, notice what you're doing. Are you sucking in the abs? Are you holding your breath? Are you creating too much pressure in this system, which is creating pelvic tension? And these are some really great tools to help break that cycle. It takes time and consistency, so be patient with yourself. If you're wanting to learn more about the core and pelvic floor system to build a really strong, resilient core, go ahead and check out the description box below. I have tons of resources for you down there, as well as up here. Keep up the good work. Until next time.